Let's take a look at 3.1. If A, D, and B, C are parallel to each other, determine an equation in the form of Y is equal to U. As to what equation, we don't actually have that information. So what I've decided to do, what I've decided to try, is really stick to the basics. We are told that the gradient of AD is equal to the gradient of BC. That's what it means when we say that two lines are parallel. So what am I going to do? I'm going to equate the gradient of AD and the gradient of BC. The x value of B is unknown. The y value of C is unknown. So... I'm going to have x as an unknown, y as an unknown, and then I'm going to make y the subject of the formula. In doing that, I would have an equation in the form y is equal to, and then we're going to take it from there. The y value will therefore be 6 minus uh, the y1, which is the y coordinate of c, which is y, divided by x value. The x value of b is x minus the y value of minus the x value of c i mean which is minus four okay so let's take a look three plus one is four minus four plus two is minus two this is just uh minus this is just six minus y i mean and then x minus four okay if we cross multiply at this point uh, we would get four x minus 16 being equals to two y minus 12 let's make y the subject of the formula we're going to get 2y being equals to 4x minus 16 plus 12 that will be minus 4 if we divide throughout by 2 we get y is equals to 2x minus 2 so we have some equation we have some y is equals to using the mere fact that the two lines are parallel to each other their gradients must be equal that is 3.1. And then 3.2. Let's take a look. 3.2. This right here is 3.1. If BC is equal to 2AD, determine another equation in terms of X and Y. Okay? So BC, well, that's, that's our line, and it is apparently 2 times AD. Okay, so let's use the distance formula in this case. We are really sticking to the basics here. So we need to calculate um, the length of BC. So let's take a look. If we take B as our second point, Y2 is 6, Y1 is Y, we square that, plus X2 is X minus 4 squared. Okay, this is equal to 2 the length of ad okay y2 if we take a as our second point should be three so we have three minus y1 so plus one squared okay and then plus now <laughs> i'm having a, a problem here with space so let me write it like this instead let me just put this here okay um plus minus four plus two squared okay so on the i think instead of actually solving uh, what is inside the square roots here uh we should just square first and see what we end up with i think let's square rather let's do that first and then we're gonna see what we end up with um so let's square both sides when we square both sides we are going to end up with 6 minus y squared plus x minus 4 squared being equal to 2 squared is 4 and then we can put these we can put these in our calculator okay because we don't have any variable there so 3 plus 1 squared plus Ah, uh, well, the calculator was still in stats, so let me just clear that. 3 plus 1 squared plus minus 4 plus 2 squared. Okay, and then uh, that gives me 20. So here I have 4 multiplied by 20. Okay, so 6 minus y squared, what is that equals to? 
Okay, so let's take a look. 6 squared is 36 minus 12y plus y squared plus x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 80. There we go. So we're going to have y squared minus 8x. Okay, not like term. So, well, let's start by grouping the y's next to each other. So minus 12y minus 8x. And then the constants, 36 plus 16. 36 plus 16. Uh, that is 52 so plus 52 is equal to 80 okay so what do we do do we take 80 to the right hand side to the left hand side or do we take uh, 52 to the right hand side i think it will look better if i take 80 to the left hand side so 52 minus 80 it's minus 28 so we're gonna have y squared minus 12y minus 8x minus 28 being equals to 0. Okay, I've just realized a mistake here. We have this x squared here. So let's do this. Let's take this and move it just a little bit to the right hand side and have plus x squared. Okay, so before minus 8x, let's have plus x squared. So plus x squared minus 8x minus 28 is equal to 0. Okay, we can leave it like that. It's still fine. Okay, so that is another um, equation in terms of x and y. And then 3.3 says determine the values of x and y. So we have two equations. This equation 1 and this equation 2 and we're supposed to find the values of x and y so take a look at these here we have y being equals to 2x minus 2 so in the second equation let's substitute 2x uh, minus 2 in place of y so we're gonna have 2x minus 2 squared minus 12 multiplied by 2x minus 2 minus or oh, well plus x squared not minus minus 8x let's take 28 to the right hand side we're gonna have 28 so there we go if we solve for x we can have corresponding value of y or values depending on how many values of x we end up with so 2x minus 2 everything squared that is just 4x squared minus 8x i think so 2x multiplied by minus 2 is minus 4x. You multiply that by 2, you get minus 8x plus 4. And then minus 24x plus 24 plus x squared minus 8x being equal to 28. Okay, so there we go. Um, like terms, 4x squared plus x squared, that will give us 5x squared. So we have 5x squared. And then other like terms, minus 8x minus 24x minus 8x. Okay, so minus 8 minus 24 minus 8. That is minus 40x. And then the constants. Yeah, I think we're only left with constants. So we're going to be, we're going to have equals to, and then... We have 28 minus 4 when we take it to the other side, minus 24 when we take it to the other side. We get 0. So we can take a common factor of x here. So x multiplied by 5x minus 40 being equals to 0. So it's either x equals to 0 or x is equals to 40 divided by 5 which gives us 8 right so we have two values of x so we can have two values of y therefore we can have two values of y we just substitute x is equals to zero into uh, this equation when x is equals to zero 
y is going to be minus 2. Okay, and then when x is equal to 8, if we substitute 8 here, we're going to get 16 minus 2, which is 14. So when x is equal to 8, y is equal to 14. So these are the possible values of x and y. Okay, that is 3.3. Let's take a look at 3.4. So 3.4, if y is less than 0. Okay, so take a look here. We have two possible values of y. We have y is equal to minus 2 and y is equal to 14. This question starts by saying if y is less than 0. So this is the point you are interested in where the coordinates of, uh, well, where x is 0 and y is minus 2. Determine the translation of point C so that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, first let's substitute these values of x and y when y is less than 0 first, before we even attempt answering our equation. So we are saying that, um, let me just change a few things. We are saying that x is 0. So x is 0 and y is minus 2 because we are interested in the solution where y is less than 0. So there we go. x is 0, y is minus 2. And then now to actually answer our equation, determine the translation of point C so that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Okay, right, parallelogram. Let me show you something uh, about the properties of a parallelogram. Well, this is not a new equation. We have done a, uh, we have solved a similar equation like this in the past. I just can't remember which year, which paper, but I can guarantee it 100%. If you've watched all the videos in my channel, you have came across a question that requires you to do something like this. And it was actually an easy question for you to answer. All right. So let's say that we have Brian of power. Let's say that we have A, B, C, and D. Okay. So in a parallelogram, the difference in the x values of a and c will be the same difference in the x values of b and d in order for this thing to be a parallelogram, right? In order for this thing to be a parallelogram, the difference in the values of a and c will be the same as the difference in the y values of b and d. So let's take a look at that first and take care of the x values. So the x value of a in our case, so let me say x of a, x of a is equal to minus 4 and x of d is equal to minus 2. So you can see that from a to d, if we're looking at the x values, we need, we have two units, we move two units in terms of the x values from a to d so we need the same with regards to b and d b is stationary we are moving c okay so the x value of b is zero and the x value of c is four but we need only a difference of two units between b and c so how do we move c we have to make sure that the x value of c is the x value of c is 2 so that the difference in the x values of b and c is 2 units so what is the translation we need to move c the x value of c 2 units to the left so x of c x of c needs to move 2 units to the left and then now we need to worry about the y values the same is true with the y values y of a is equal to 3 and y of d is equal to 3 minus 1 minus 1 so the difference in their four in their y values is 4 units the difference in their y values is 4 units d is 4 units below a so take a look at b the y value of b is 6 so we need the y value of c to be 
four units below, which should be at two, which should be at two. So we want y of c to be equals to two, so that it can be four units below y of b. But y of c is minus two. We need y of c to be plus two. So we need to move four units up. So this is the translation. Two units to the left, four units up. Yeah, we go. Or rather, should I say, yeah, we land. <laughs> if you know, you know.